Now, when you're building a WooCommerce store, one of the key areas to its success is how well you create a logical way to navigate the products. In this video, I'm going to show you one simple technique to help you make your shoppers' lives a little easier by creating a really logical way to visually navigate through your product categories and subcategories. Ready to get started? Cool. Let's hop over onto the computer now and we'll take a look at what we're working on today. So let me quickly show you exactly what we're going to be creating today. This is the homepage for my shop. And as you can see, we've got this great looking section underneath that allows me to go through to the various different categories that are part of my shop. So for example, if I go to clothing, we'll go into the clothing section and you can see there's all the products under clothing. You also see we've got this section at the top now, which are the subcategories of clothing. So if we jump into accessories, you can see we now take a look at the accessories and we don't see anything else at the top for those subcategories because there's nothing else there. This is the bottom level of that entire structure. So this is something that is really easy to build with JetWoo Builder. Let me quickly run over what I've got installed. This is using Elementor Free. We're not using the Pro version for this and we're using JetWoo Builder. As you can see, this is Beta 1.72. For this all work, we're going to be editing two different pages. The first is the home page, and that's what you can see right now. The second is the template for the archive for our products. You may have multiple archives, at which point, if you want this to work, you'd have to apply this to every single template you use. For this example, we're only going to be using one template. So come back into the dashboard, and we're going to go in, first of all, to the home page. So let's open up all our pages. And from there, let's find our home page and open that up with Elementor. Once we're inside there, we'll take out what's already there, which is this section, and we'll start with a completely blank slate. So we'll delete that. Now, there are two ways in which we can achieve this same end result. If you want to get creative and have it look the way that I have it there, which is a nice kind of layout, we can use the taxonomy tiles. If you want it something really simple and straightforward, you can use the categories grid. So for the home page, we're going to do the taxonomy tile. We'll drop that inside there. And what this does now, it gives us a predefined set of different layouts we can use, and then we can filter and fine tune what exactly is going to be displayed inside there. So for this example, we're going to choose this particular layout, because I quite like this. We're going to then just adjust the minimum height so everything looks just a little bit better. We're going to set this to about 500. And if you want to, you can adjust the size of the main box, but we'll leave that at about 50. Once you've done that, then you can choose what you want to show inside here. Default is categories, but you do have tags as well. So you may have set up tags that are specific to use in this, that you want to feature specific categories inside here, where you could use the tags for that, which is quite cool. If we choose tags, you can see that will now open up and we can then drop in the taxonomy tag IDs that we want to use. For this example though, we're gonna keep this really simple and just use categories. You can hide empty, which is a good way of making sure you don't have anything inside here that has no products associated with it. So we'll do exactly that. And if you have uncategorized left into your setup, you can also set that to not show. You can also, if you want to, set this to show specific IDs. So you have lots of control over how you want your content to actually display. So now that we've configured what we want to display, let's just fine tune exactly what's going to show up. You can see we can order these if we want to based upon their name, ascending or descending, but we can choose to have this by ID, count or random, entirely up to you how you'd want to use that. I don't particularly like using these counts, so I'm gonna take that off and it just says what category we're currently looking at. You can then adjust things like the title max length and the description length if you're using descriptions for your categories. Come back up to style and now we can configure how this all looks and how we can display things as we interact with it. Let's just bump up the space between these different sections. We'll set that to about 10 pixels. I'm going to leave the border off. We're not going to know what border radius is and so on. You can then set things like your horizontal and vertical alignments. So we can say we want this to be centered. You can see the text now just to center or right. We'll leave that to left and we're going to set this to bottom. And you can see that now drops it down the bottom of the page, but obviously doesn't look particularly great because we can't see it in some instances. Accessories doesn't show up too well. Hoodies is pretty much invisible. So how do we rectify that? Well, we can adjust the styling on various different parts of this. To do that, we're just gonna edit the box overlay. So what we can do is we can set this to normal or hover. We're gonna keep this to the normal to start off with and we'll select we want to use a color. I'm gonna use one of my global colors that I've set as part of the theme styles in Elemental. So let's just choose this footer background color and you can see now everything turns almost black. We can just adjust that by modifying the opacity on there and we'll set that to somewhere around there. 
If I wanted to select the hover, I could do that as well. And we'll do that and we'll just set that to be totally transparent. So then when we hover over, we get the sort of nice effect. Obviously the text still doesn't stand out. So we need to address that next. And to do that, we just simply come down to the content panel and then we can control all the different aspects, box shadows and so on. So we can adjust the typography. So we'll just say for the title, we'll set this to be white. And you can see now that immediately stands out a lot better. And we're going to reference this now to be our secondary font style. And if we want to adjust the sizing on there, we could do just that. So you can see we can bump that up a little bit to make it slightly larger. We can adjust the weight on there if we want to whatever you want to do. So now we've created this pretty nice looking effect. So that's the first part of it done. Let's just quickly save this or update it. And then we'll test this out to make sure that everything is working. So we're back on the test page. As you can see, we've now got everything laid out that we want. So if we now jump over to clothing, we'll see that we filter this out to show the clothing section. And as you can see, we've got the subsections. So let's replace this subsection at the top now with our own design. And I can show you exactly how to do all of that. For this, we need to come into Crocker Block and into Woo Page Builder because we're going to be using one of the template files. Now, this default shop template is the template that I've set up as the default shop archive, and we're going to use that. So let's edit that with Elemental. What we'll do then is once that loads in, we're going to get rid of what I have originally, and we're going to recreate that from scratch. So again, we're going to scroll down on the left hand side so we get to the options for JetBoo Builder. This time we're going to use the categories grid as opposed to the taxonomy tiles. Drag and drop that into our page. Now we can set up all the different conditions we want for this again. Now, if you want to speed up the process, you have some presets you can choose from. I'm going to ignore those though, because I want to set everything up myself. Okay, so let's just take a brief look at what we have on the left hand side. You can see we can choose from the presets, the number of columns we want to display, making sure that everything is set to equal height for the content that's in there. And you can see we've got some other styling options. The number of categories, we can set that. We can also choose things like hide empty, hide subcategories if we wanted to, hide uncategorized, however you want to set this up. Now, the power of this comes in when we take a look at the query. And this is something that you have to have 1.72 or above to see this new option. So we're going to choose all and you can see we've got parent category, category IDs and current subcategories. Now, if you choose parent category, you've got to drop in the ID for that parent category. If you choose category IDs, you can stack multiple different IDs inside there for the categories that are part of your store. However, what we want is the current subcategories. And what that's going to do is when we click on that first page and we come through to a section, for example, clothing that has subcategories inside there, it'll show us the subcategories for the clothing category. Hope that makes sense. And this is where the power of this comes in. So we're going to set that as we can see it there. Now we can go through and we can figure anything we want. So for example, these featured images, we can set those up to various different options. Just make sure that everything looks the way you want it to and it all looks nice and neat and tidy. And again, you can change things like the HTML tag that's being used for the title underneath each of these different categories or subcategories. We'll disable the product count because again, like I say, don't really like that. And, you know, we can set whatever we want inside here. There we go. So that's all pretty self-explanatory. Now, next up, we have the carousel option. And if you have a store that has lots of categories or subcategories, this could be a perfect way of being able to allow people to scroll through and find whatever they want. Now, at the moment, we've got things configured in a very minimal fashion. So let me just undo some of these and show you exactly how we can start to use the carousel just so you can get an idea of how it works. So what I do is I'm going to set this back to make sure that we say everything. So we've got query, got everything set to all. We're going to hide empty and do that. Hide, hide subcategorized and uncategorized. And then we're going to bump this up to say, for example, six. So now what we should see is we now have six different categories. Some of those are useful, some not so much so. So we'll say we'll hide empty. So we just end up with these four. Now, obviously that doesn't look great. So if we come down now to the carousel and we enable this, we can now configure this to get it to look a lot nicer. So you can see by default, it automatically gives us three across and we can then click to scroll through to the next section and keep on going around. So what do we have inside here? Well, we can choose between a horizontal or vertical. We can choose the number of slides. We can say the minimum number of slides, for example, we'll set the minimal height, choose the number of slides to scroll between one and four. And then you can say whether you want to show the arrows. So you may want this to be automatic with no arrows. Well, you could do that if you wanted to. 
You can also change the next and previous arrows to one of multiple different choices. So you may say you want to use this arrow, for example, you can see that now changes. If you want to adjust all these things, you can do that inside the styling. We can also say we want to show the dots for navigation so we can see those underneath. We can set this to autoplay, control the autoplay speed, and if we want it to pause when you mouse over or take your finger over if you're using a tablet, all these things are inside there. So then if we come up with the styling options, you can see we have full control over things like the carousel arrows, the dots, and so on. So this is a really cool option, and I would ex say to experiment with this and see exactly how it all works. For our example, though, we want to keep this pretty minimal. So we're going to come back out of this. We're going to disable the carousel and just quickly set everything back to the way it was, which is to say hide and so on, and then set this to be current subcategories. Okay, so we've got that set up. All I want to do now is just adjust the size of this. Easiest way to do that is just adjust the columns, and we'll say we want to have six. Okay, so we'll update this page, and we've now created our sub navigation for categories inside the subcategories. So let's just test this out. Come out, go to our site. We're going to go back to our home page, and we've got there's our first section. So we're going to come out to our clothing section. We'll click on that, and inside there, there's our accessories and our hoodies. If we click on hoodies, for example, where there's no subcategories, you can see that now removes it from the navigation and we only see the hoodie options. Come back out of this and, for example, we go back this time to accessories, which has no subcategories. You can see it takes us into the subcategory section and we don't have that subcategory option at the top. And that's pretty much it. That's how easy it is with JetWood Builder to create these more customized navigation, show your categories, your subcategories, create a really nice user experience for your WooCommerce users. Now you should be well on your way to building a more user-focused structure for all of your WooCommerce stores. If you want to learn how to get the most out of JetWoo Builder, well, check out this playlist you can see on screen next. That's going to give you some great tips and techniques. If you found this video useful, please feel free to hit that thumbs up button, smash the bell icon, and hit the subscribe button. If you didn't enjoy the video, though, well, feel free to hit that thumbs down button twice, as that works pretty well, too. As always, all of the applicable links for everything covered in today's video are in the description below. My name is Paul C. This has been WP Tetson. Until next time, take care.